adolescent tolerance of African-American conservatives was on full display last week, and this time they set their sights on none other than the man who dared to speak truth to power in front of President Obama, and that's world-renowned neurosurgeon Dr. Benjamin Carson. Watch this. When you're publicly, publicly admitting your party doesn't care enough about black America, then it's time for a new black friend. Enter Dr. Ben Carson, who's been embraced recently because he's smart and helpful in assuaging their guilt. Carson is a bootstraps kind of guy, speaking their language, talking like he built his path from a poor kid to a pediatric neurosurgeon all by himself. He must have gotten government-backed school loans, which is a form of public assistance, but let's not let facts derail a good I built it without help story. Carson's enjoying the GOP's version of affirmative action where black faces that can spit conservative game get raced to the front of the line because then people get to put a bumper sticker on their cars saying, how can I be racist? I would have voted for Carson, which will fit nicely over the bumper sticker saying, how can I be racist? I would have voted for Kane, which fit nicely over the bumper sticker saying, how can I be racist? I would have voted for Alan West. Yes, any black friend will do. Unfortunately, Dr. Carson joins a long list of African-American conservatives who've been subjected to comments like that. And tomorrow night, by the way, he'll be on this program responding. But tonight, here with Reaction, the author of Blacklash, which, by the way, is now out in paperback tomorrow. Fox News contributor Denise Borelli and from the New York Civil Rights Coalition, the one and only Mike Myers. You start your book which was out in paperback tomorrow. Yes. Black, here it is right here. You start this in this book and you say to Google your name. I've done that. Yeah. And when you Google your name, what comes up? All kinds of things I can't even say on TV because the left does not want black conservatives to be vocal. I wrote Blacklash to expose the failures of the progressives and also to push back on the black liberal establishment whose message is about wealth redistribution and race baiting. Here we have the MSNBC characters like Torre and Al Sharpton who were spewing this nonsense daily and nightly on, these, on this network and it's absolutely outrageous. We need to push well, back this is now NBC. This is the dog whistle network. This is everything's yeah. a dog whistle, dog whistle, dog whistle. It's like an obsession. Right. Um, but forget about them. Here is a man that spends his entire life working with kids, so doing some of the most advanced, delicate surgery, saving people's lives. He talks about the, the tone in the country as led by the president as unhealthy. He talks about solutions, medical savings accounts. Uh, stop the class warfare, just, just given really sensible ideas in a very measured tone, Michael, and he, res he resonates. That network, I know you don't want to talk about them, but that network, oh, I don't care what they, they, they have a race problem. They've turned their airwaves over to white and black lunatics, racial fanatics, and when they speak of Dr. Benjamin Carson the way they do, they're always calling us racists, but they speak of blacks as blacks. They speak of Dr. Ben Carson as a black who doesn't kowtow to their line. In their judgment, you have to speak black, you have to love black, you got to uh, be black, you got to vote black as they define black. And anybody who believes in the free market, anybody who believes in, in a limited government, anybody who disagrees with the Sharptons and the so-called Tourets, then you're not black. You're an Uncle Tom, or you're, or, or, or you're worse. And that, why, is that the means is black? this, though, acceptable and it's commonplace? Not, it's not no, acceptable. No, well, it's in the sense that if anybody made a comment um, against an African-American that's not a conservative, like the comments that are being made here, we know what would happen. It's but a they, double well, standard. All right, but why? Why is, the, for example, attacks against Christians seemingly go, I don't hear the same attacks against Muslims. I don't hear the same attacks against right. other faiths. Why? Right. Well, listen, it's a double standard, and the left does not want black conservatives to be vocal. Why? Dr. Carson is a success story. He is an epitome of America's exceptionalism. He grew up poor. He did bad in school. He turned his life around. He's a neurosurgeon. He's a success story. This would blow away the myth of the black liberal establishment because they build their life around playing the race card, right. race baiting, and... and, and um, so it's really an act uh, of courage to be black. But it's really, sadly, it has to become an act of courage to be conservative and African American because you're going to be called names. Yeah. You have been called well, names. I don't, I don't Only cons half of... I don't consider it an act of courage. Well, I consider what this is... You have to... Wait, wait. wait. I you have to understand these names? I consider, right. I consider the bosses of MSNBC as cowards.
They are racial racketeers just as badly as Sharpton or Touré. They promote this thing, this stuff, they foment this stuff, and they gave, the, they turned their airways over to fanatics. But these are not liberals. One last point. These it are not liberals. Any these are fanatics. Of Obama. You know, for example, I guess right. people forgot the years that I was very critical of Clinton's didn't exactly love right. Sean Hannity. Right. But if you are critical of Obama, it's like the, the one last gasp you can have is to say, oh, it must be because of race. But this is why we policy. need to turn this around. We need a Chick-fil-A moment. People need to get behind black conservatives who are for liberty. What is wrong about liberty? You have a lot of people who are afraid to speak out and be honest about but their true values and beliefs. It's, it's, we need to get behind it's, these it's, individuals it's, and rally behind them. I just them. think it's much worse than that because they have these, cra these lunatics on yelling and screaming false charges of racism and just very the other day. But they need to be challenged but the other day, what now, they do and say. Now on that, that network, we won't call his name, they even have people who are now conjecturing that the criticism of Mayor Bloomberg you know, over his gun control legislation proposals and advertising is anti-Semitic. These people have lost their minds. Seriously? Yes. <laughs> anti-Semitic because they're critical of Blair Boomer. Sean, FreedomWorks has a website coming out soon. It will be a community for black conservatives to come to, and they can network, get information, and get active and push back on this kind of nonsense. I ask, where are the grown-ups at NBC? Where's Comcast? Hey, by the way, where I got to wonder what Matt Lauer's thinking. What does Matt Lauer think? Oh, of this? Wait a minute. What does what does Brian Williams think? Their Where silence. They their silence tells us what it's they deafening, think. Deafening, right? right their silence roll. tells us what they think. All right, guys. Good to see you both. And Appreciate they call it. us racist. Oh. Coming up. <laughs> coming up. If the IRS.